Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another Wednesday Let's Play Threatgen Red vs. Blue, where we take full advantage and jump into the Threatgen Red vs. Blue cybersecurity game-based simulation platform and learn cybersecurity best practices as well as have a good time, uh, whether we're playing as the red team or the blue team. And we've got a great stream for you today, just like every Wednesday. Today, we will be jumping into the platform, but I will not be playing. I will be facilitating, hosting, and bringing cybersecurity practitioner perspective to a gameplay that is going to be played by community beta tester and longtime um, you know, member of kind of the threat gen community, Alex Goodwin, who has a deep, and when I say deep, I'm talking like you can't see the bottom deep understanding of the game mechanics and the different elements of how the threat gen red versus blue platform actually operates so it's going to be a really great stream if you just got into the threat gen red versus blue platform and you're not 100 percent sure how to kind of move about it maybe not sure how real life practitioner uh you know uh adapts into the gameplay mechanics uh it's going to be really really uh interesting educational and a lot of fun i'm personally excited i know alex will be able to help me level up my game in the platform and i know he'll be able to help you so let's get into it and have a good time All right. Hey, everybody. Hey, Alex. How are you today? Uh, morning, Jerry. Uh, morning, morning to everyone in chat. Hey, so, hey there, Simon. Absolutely. Hey, Cactoid. Yep. Want to um, say what's up to that... so many people in chat. I don't know, uh, Alex, if you can see the chat on the side. Hopefully you can. Some We've of them. Got... Yep. Cyber Munchkin, Just a Bite, Nightshade, Alicia, Jerry, China's in here. Regulars, Cactoid, Jim. Uh, great members of the community, and I know we're going to have a banger today. So, Alex, many of the threat gen community members are aware of you and your accomplishments, but for those of you, or for those who are coming maybe from the Simply Cyber or just happen to stumble upon the stream, can you just give us a little bit of back, uh, background of who Alex Goodwin is, and then let's jump into the platform. Uh, you mean just related to Red versus Blue, or just yeah, in yeah, or... yeah, or yes, okay. exactly. Okay, well. I said it was, blimey, nearly eight, nearly eight months, uh, nearly seven months ago. Now, middle of April, I tripped. I tripped over this thing on thing on Steam called Red vs. Blue, and thought, hey, this looks fun. You know, bought it. It was a half price sale, I think. And then it sort of went downhill from there. I sort of just played it because I'm a bit of a programmer by background. So, reported a lot of bugs, got thrown off email support. Apparently, Clinton reckons that is a bad. That is a badge of honor. <laughs> And eventually ended up promoted up to the beta testing community and given a free platform access in sort of as in thank I believe you know, I can say in thanks for my services, helping debug the platform and just sort of and trying to help new people, which is my main goal today. Here is just trying to help everyone here try, try to understand the platform a little better as both red and blue because the poachers need to know the gamekeepers' tricks and vice versa. And thus improve that a bit. And if I can pull up a win, well, great. But that's sort of a secondary goal. All right. Well, I think we're in for a real treat. Now, you are, we, we talked about this. You will be playing as the red team today. Is that correct? Yep. yep. All right. So, Alex, we playing as red team. Before we dive into the platform, Alex, what is your strategy today so people can kind of uh, like frame what they're about to experience? Okay. Well, so my. Okay, this is my first, my, obviously, as I'm not sure if you're most, some of our watchers, listeners, viewers are aware, there is two major win conditions. There's one is destroy the process, like damage the damage blue team's process. And the other is send them broke. Now, as we've had a chat off stream, I'm going to focus on damaging the process. Obviously, if I have to swing to sending them broke, we'll, we'll pivot, but so be it. Now, there's three major attack vectors 
red can use to actually execute on that goal first one is silo like classically what you think of as hacking mm -hmm. second is uh social engineering like tricking people into downloading links like uh, uh spear phishing email compromise and the like and the third is the physical side of things which i think clint has waxed lyrical at length about where they jump the fence and actually break and actually break or talk their way in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to use at least two of those vectors, if not three, just to try to get to sort of show you that this is one one way to do it. I, I have to emphasize this is only one way how I play. This is not the way. Hopefully there is no one great. There is no one true way because that just gets boring game wise. Yeah, I agree. hundred percent. Like and the game's a little different every time, too, because it does have adaptive, oh, yeah. active adversary AI playing mm. against you, uh, who you'll be playing against today. Uh, so yeah. every game is a bit different. Yep. So, all right. Well, chat, you guys know the rules. If you got questions, if you want to throw in comments, throw them in chat. We'll throw them up as the game goes. But, Alex, are you ready to dive in? Yeah, well, let's get started. And I said I'm going to go on a, into the teeth of an unknown map, a random map. Let's see what happens. All right. Sounds good. Let's dig in. So okay, we are playing Threat Gen Red versus Blue. You can learn more at ThreatGen.com. Uh, Alex is just setting up the the yep. kind of the rules, if you will, of this particular match. These are the default settings that come up. All right. And close that. We'll start playing. Yep. Obviously, single player because red team. Yep. And random because I said unknown map. So one of our first tasks will be to figure out which map we're on. Yes, people like David E. who could probably do this twice before breakfast, but let's just try to get, show, show them one way how it's done. <laughs> okay, so there's the start game. So, yeah, fair warning, this my style of teasing thing may be a bit of an info dump. So, if people are getting lost, speak up. I can't read your mind. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll facilitate chat, yeah. guys. Remember, the oh. whole the whole point of this stream, Alex and I have lots of experience playing the game, lots of experience, um, you know, in practicing cybersecurity, at least on my side. So, you know, this is for you guys. So if you have questions, if, if a decision is being made and you do, you want to understand why, drop it in chat. We're here. This is a, this is a community stream. Hop in. Hmm. Let's roll. All right. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to, obviously right now we have no idea what map. Mm -hmm. However, I'm going to probably go initially for social engineering route. So we get our OSINT going. Right, let me get rid of our names. There we go. Yep. Uh, persistence. So when, when we do compromise a machine, we can cover our tracks or ultimately possibly set up a covert attack later. Of course it, it's four turns. So you need, I'd like to get that going early. And okay. then, obviously, of course, we're going electronic social engineering. We need to research electronic social engineering. Okay, that's my action queue. Basically, I'm just setting up laying groundwork from the first way I'm trying to go in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just going to end turn and then buzz through the next turn because everyone's busy. Right, and you've and you've you're going to buzz through the turns because all of your resources are currently allocated. Yeah. There's yeah, no I've got no one available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone's everyone's busy. Cactoid Jim does bring up a great point. There will be more maps coming with version 2.0, um, and that's going to really mix things up and really, uh, you know, add a new dimension to the gameplay. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I said uh, for live in constant living constant chaos, it does vary. Sometimes I like now think. Like come up with a strategy, try it, and adapt to needed. Sometimes I just dive in and see what happens. All right, so we got that electronic AC landed. Persistence is still cooking. So let's try. I'm going to try a spearfish attack. This early, um, huh? Okay. Well, there's well most likely red. Well, what defenses does blue have in play? Okay. All right. No, that's a good point. I just wasn't sure if you had to develop your skill uh, around. Yeah, social I've already done. I've already done one research electronic SE or yep. off the bat, and 
We'll and spear fishing does take three turns, right? So yes. when when yes. you're making three your resources. decisions, are you are you kind of playing out like when are these things going to resolve? Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's a great point because coming into it, I've noticed on the uh, hey Carrie, I've noticed on this, I noticed quite a few quite a few Steam players like a very early segment, like where you they start this network segmentation turn four and land at turn seven. So if I'm up against that, I'm going to hold off the spearfish till turn four, so I can land after. I get someone like that, so I can land after they segment the network, and I'm not cut off from the asset. I'm just compromised. Oh, nice. That's actually <clears throat> that's a great point, Alex. And that's more of an advanced technique because when I was saying, um, you know, spearfishing and, and order of operations, I'm thinking, okay, spearfishing takes three turns to 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 resolve. And electronic SE research takes two turns, so you could technically schedule electronic SE now and spear fishing now, and you would be able to level up before the electronic, I mean, before the spear yeah. fishing actually resolves. But you're talking yeah. about actually dynamically related to your uh, opponent's position. Interesting. Yeah. Essentially, it's threat modeling. Yeah, exactly. Like if, I'm, if I'm facing an opponent who, who's, who, who likes to segment very early, well, I'm going to do a bit more research and slow up a bit. Yeah. Obviously, we're up against the AI, which is not anywhere near as early, like mm -hmm. turn 10, I think. So again, this will be another all, everyone busy. Yeah. Turn, so let me let me, let me address chat really quick. DG BSEX asking what we got going on here. We are playing Threat Gen Red versus Blue, and we have community member and beta tester Alex Goodwin actually piloting it. He is um, an incredibly, incredibly advanced skill as far as gameplay game mechanics and understanding advanced techniques so this is like a, pr uh, like a power user stream for gameplay uh and we are also discussing the cybersecurity, you know practical world implications of the actions he's taking let, let it fly uh alex yeah so everyone's busy so flick through i'm gonna scoot through what's up carrie good to see you good to see you jeremy williams great to have you here all right, we've got persistence. The spear fishing is in flight. Now, what I don't want to do is do anything with, that takes more than one turn because what happens if I've spear fished an X risk? Like something mm -hmm. which gives me proxy, direct proxy control of a PL, of at least one PLC. Mm -hmm. That's what, so I'm going to just do default creds just because I need something one turn. That's a nice fit. And she's one and done. I could do weak password, but potato, potato. Yep. That's that's a tip that uh, Greg gave me uh, during the tournament, actually, like uh, in between rounds uh, when I was just kind of discussing it with him, is that default creds, that really is a Boolean value. You either, if, if an asset has default creds uh, in place, you know, it's, it's going to hit if you have done the research and it is really just a one turn research. Mm. So it's, it's very, very um, nice. It's a nice one. Mm. All right. So that's. Everyone busy. Let's see if this. Let's see. Let the spearfish resolve and see if and where, if where and how we. All lucky. right, luck be a lady. Hmm. Let's see. Well, we I've got get. something. I'm just gonna. Nice. Clear through those. Okay, it looks like we've got a user. So let's have a tracks host host scan because we're still trying to get an idea of what map we're on. I got a little sidetracked in getting setting up the social engineering. So, and and before you like before you pass the turn, I I want to mm. discuss this for a moment. Mm. So I'll let you find you know make your decisions, and then we can discuss. All right. So so we're covering tracks. We're doing a host scan just to see. Okay, the network's probably not segmented yet. Let's see how many how many um assets are there. And we'll get some more electronic SE going because I'm going to try another. I'm going to try another fish. All right, all right. <clears throat> so you got an asset in the network, and the first thing you did, uh, I mean, you didn't even really think about it. It was it was immediately cover tracks, host scan. Yeah. Is that your is that your um, you know standard operating procedure once you compromise an asset at any point in the game or just at the beginning, you know, third of the game? Well, it sort of depends what I'm aiming for but yeah early i try to compromise i try to cover the track if i haven't done a covert mm -hmm. attack which you can, i don't believe you can do you can, i don't believe you can do on spearfish on fishing attacks mm -hmm. 
So it that that when the bot so when the compromise does get rumbled, there's there's less there for forensics to get, less threat and tell, and also mm -hmm. less chance of it being detected. And also, I'm, and also, it's, yeah, it is a bit of a habit this early in the game. Yeah, it's still trying to be stealthy, yeah. right? Hmm. Yeah, have a track, high scan, research. All right, let's do it. Good to see you, Jared Pierpoint. All right, you're getting green green lights all all along the way. Okay, this looks like the because that that relative paucity of assets. This looks like we're on the manufacturing map. Just so that the other two maps would have more would have more things. Mm -hmm. Okay, another gameplay uh, point. Uh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. No, actually, I didn't. Though. Actually, I didn't uh, carry. I actually got. I actually got Picard. Maybe he's. Maybe he's off growing hair at somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Don't worry. Uh, I've got the sounder ready for when you find Carl. If I find Carl. Yes. All right. Well, let's research electronic SC. Oops. So I, I have a question for you, Alex, because I this a lot of players get to this point, and I'm always struggle with. You could burn a lot of your resources and start, you know, a new like scanning and enumerating these various assets, but it's almost, um, you know, whack a mole or or random chance, right? There's no yeah. there's no information. So, what do you like to do? Do you like to just ignore these until the segmentation happens, or do you start to grind into them? What, what what's your uh, game well, strategy right now? As a sort of a hedge against the um uh, having to pivot is oh i'm actually going to give old baldy a hard time here get data x full disruptive malware because that because i'm guessing it's in the user segment but no, no it could be one well, actually wrong it is in the user segment on the manufacturing map so if i lose if i if i get the x get the x full and malware going that's that continues until blue does something about it even if even if i've lost access to the asset Okay. Like when segmentation lands. Interesting. Another another game mechanic element that I did not know about. I am learning hmm. just as much as you are, chat, about this. And I work for the company. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, so we'll, we'll give Picard a hard time, and then we'll get the spearfish going. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. They all started malware, exfiltrate data. Now this is probably where you're going back for your order of operations. Which doesn't matter as much. Okay, electronic SC, and I will do something a little different. I'll try a social media campaign, just to shut more to show it off to our viewers. Okay. Now, because they're, this is where the order of operations comes in. Because that they're both the queue on the same turn and have the same time, like they both take the same amount of turns, they'll resolve in the order of how they were queued. So, with ele the electronic SE will resolve first, and it'll then immediately boost the immediate the campaign. That's a great point, and one that uh, newer players like live in constant chaos should definitely take note of. It is a um, f FIFO stack, right? So, or, yeah. or fi a FILO stack, like so. You know, if you if you think of it as a, as a, a true stack, it pops off the top of the stack. No, uh, it's more of a queue. First in, well, first out. Stacks last in, first out. First in, last out. Yeah, but oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Because you you click on social media campaign, then electronic SE, right? Okay, yeah, you're right. So just think of it basically as the top of the queue is going to be popping yeah. off and changing game state as it grinds through. Yeah. Like this is one particular example, but the time that I see it most often in my gameplay is when you're activating incident response and you're trying to maximize um, yeah. your actions at that point. Yeah. Well, generally what I do, I'm just sorry for the sidetrack, what I do there, if say you you have you have cause to enter IR, like I have to like say there might be a box compromised in a segment, like you might drop patches in the box on that segment, then at the very end trip IR. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. as in another example of another example of action ordering, said Aaron has explained why they did it this way, and there's a basically so they can always answer the question that which action happened first. Yes. All right. 
Yeah. So real quick, thing. Solomon asks a quick question from LinkedIn. What part of the game is ideal for government defense organizations? Well, Solomon, this, this platform has a couple different use cases. One is to educate and train up uh, cybersecurity practitioner staffs to see and respond to different circumstances and understand and appreciate what workflows would look like. And also, there we're not demonstrating it today, but the platform is fully robust to be able to deliver dynamic, engaging tabletop uh, exercises for uh, incident response tabletop um, testing. All right, please continue and I'll answer uh, yeah. a couple more LinkedIn questions as, as we get time. All please right. continue. Everyone's busy, so. All right, hold on. So LinkedIn user asks, are there any restrictions around implementing this in a university level course? Uh, contact well, us, there, there is a uh, EULA uh, around the Steam version and then there's the professional version, which is what we're playing on right now, uh, which has some different EULA, uh, but there are multiple universities in the United States that are actually leveraging threat gen red versus blue as part of the core curriculum uh in the cybersecurity classes so uh reach out to us if you can uh linkedin user because you're anonymous right now and i don't know who you are but go to this url threatgen.com uh, you can see it in the blue part white font down below threatgen.com and you can get in touch with us uh to answer that question in greater detail uh please continue alex yeah and also cactoid jim yeah that's exactly what i was saying the the research bonus landed, then the campaign hit. Nice. So what did we get? Uh, what did we get? I didn't see the uh, the action. Network launch. segmented. Oh, oh yes. Okay. Yep. Bit earlier than I was expecting, but eh, these things happen. Mm -hmm. well, that's the why we're campaign, Campaign's running. So right now I'm just... Now, the short eggs is eggs. If I do with some research... I'll pop a box next turn. So that's oh, uh, oh you're saying my... like and you'll have assets tied up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now the thing is my electronic SE is fairly hot is reasonably high. Yes. And it, and after the first I believe after the first sort of chunk, each each next research halves the gap remaining. So the returns diminish over time. Mm-hmm. So I may not want it I'm not probably looking at doing electronic SE. Because that's probably high enough, as, at least for where, where I'm going. Mm -hmm. But to th thinking ahead to the second part of this little demo, is I'm going to start working on our physical recon. So All right. it's, it's as pre because that's a prerequisite for running on site. I'll, I love it, I and. Um... And remember, for those of you who uh, were here a few minutes ago, Alex uh, Excel's traded data and has installed disruptive malware on one of the end users' workstations, which he can no longer see, but it is still, unless un until Blue Team activates IR and cleans it up, it is actively dumping value uh, to Alex. Hmm. All right, so. Oh, I got lucky. All right, everyone's still busy because the campaign and physical physical recon. Mm -hmm. How many turns do you like to run a campaign, Alex? Uh, it depends. Sometimes I, I can run it for like five, ten turns. Sometimes, well, as long as I had, I think it was about 25 because I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> that was more my error than anything. Yeah. Are you, are you getting a lot of strikes between 10 and 25 turn? Uh, I really can't. Really, I really actually can't remember about that one, so I'm not honestly sure. Probably not okay. as much. Uh, Cactoid, uh, yeah. No, actually, um, you sure about that, Cactoid? About even if I can't see the resource, I'll know whether it gets cleaned or or paved. Uh oh, it hit, you, you'll um. He's saying hmm. that the you know in between turns when you get the notifications at the beginning, Cactoid oh, yeah. Jim is saying that it'll it'll notify you that pivot lost. Okay. That's interesting. That's a good All tip. Right. I like that. All right. So we'll get the human social engineering research going. I like it. And a ratty course. Nice. Very nice. Hold on. Let me... Ooh. <laughs> You're kidding. I can't do a damned thing about it. You can't get to the AD server right now? I have... Everyone's busy. 
between the campaign. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, that sucks. And, and that's the really research and the asset. humanity. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll still. This is a more of a personal preference thing. I like putting them roughly where they are on the blue team map, just so I can look at look at a glance. Say, hey, right, that's the service segment. Up here's user DMZ process field. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just personal preference thing. Obviously, I just find it easy to keep track of. That's entirely up to how you want to play it. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, I'll have to grumble and try to cover my tracks next turn. What a nice who, by the way, who's checking social like guys from a pro uh, professional perspective, what like 80 server compromise through a social media campaign. That means that Carl, Carl! is literally checking Facebook from AD, like from the, from the domain controller. That's what that means, which is horrible practice, horrible, horrible practice. Don't allow that in your environment. Oh, well. Cover tracks. Let's see how long since I've launched this turn eight. So it should be going six turns. So I'm probably going to pack it up reasonably soon. Just right now, I'm covering tracks on the AD mm -hmm. server. And, nice. in, and if I don't get another asset, I'll probably get data exfil going. If yeah. How, how much asset, now? You've compromised the AD server. Do you, mm -hmm. like you personally? Do you enjoy uh, keeping the campaign going, or do you do you like get an asset and then end the campaign so you can start getting more resources? Mm, actually, it sort of depends. I said, and also because the but this, if I'm if I'm not sort of playing to teach, if I, I'm just sort of play, like pulling out the stops against, say, I get someone on Steam or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I do kind of like running the campaign a little bit, but ultimately, then ultimately, I'm going to need the resources. Because obviously, in, in this part, because we're going to be swinging from uh, social engineering to going running on site, I'm going to need those resources so I can change locations. Okay. Uh, really quick, Aftab Khan asks, what are we looking at, Caldera? No. Aftab, this is Threat Gen Red versus Blue, the cybersecurity game-based simulation platform. And right now, Alex Goodwin, who's directly beneath me, is piloting the game as a red team threat actor uh, attempting to take over a manufacturing mm. organization. I'm busy, so click it over. Okay, tracks covered. Get some data exfil going. Again, track, everyone's busy, so mm -hmm. I'm mean, leaning to probably do, we're going to finish out that campaign probably next couple of two, three turns, unless something else lands. Richard wants to know if you're executing the cyber kill chain right now. I'm not actually sure. Yes. So I, I would say no, uh, Richard. So uh, Alex is is kind of highlighting a couple different techniques that uh, the red team mm. has a, at its disposal. Um, he's he's not necessarily executing on a linear line of get to the goods and, and achieve the uh, uh, no. action on objective. He did do recon, ex, I mean, recon compromise, uh, and now he's kind of doing iterations of it. But the fact that he's even researched going on site, which is not aligned to his initial strategy, just kind of highlights, um, you know, th that you're not necessarily adhering strictly to the cyber kill chain. All right. You anyway, know, yeah, I'm going to end, end the campaign, which is a free action because I'm going to need those resources. And yep. I'm going to try installing ransomware in the AD server. Nice. Everybody likes that. Oh, I don't, I don't know. You, you may not like it if you're the CISO. No, no, no. But I'm not the CISO today. Yeah. I'm I am yeah. merely the facilitator. I would puke yeah. if my if my DC got uh, ransomware. I, I literally yeah. Speak, would vomit yeah. and then and get speaking my stuff to, to the cactoid gyms. Yeah, I'm also trying to build some notoriety, which helps with the recruit hackers. So that's why I'm trying to if I ransom the box, detonate the ransomware, go on site, possibly end up assisting the constabulary with their inquiries. Then while I'm cool on my heels, it's probably a good time to actually recruit that's right it's a good point it's a master class in playing this game <laughs> oh god yeah uh carrie you've been ran some ran somewhere <laughs> yeah i that's like it. i'm just glad i wasn't sipping any tea at the time carrie's always got jokes like that oh it. yeah he's okay All right, we have the ransomware. Boom, baby, boom. Yep, so I'm going to finish him. Cook that off. 
I mean, like that might may also distract red, uh, blue from the box, the X filling box in the user segment. I like it. Now I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a little more prep. Actually, prepare a covert attack. Gary, don't apologize. You've been working on refining them since 1989. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I'm going to rev up. Hmm. What are you thinking? I'll probably rev up the human SC to talk, help talk my way on site. Nice, and very nice. Because I've been watching you stream so long. Try to keep <laughs> everyone busy. Yeah, so that, that COVID attack will take, will take a couple of turns. Mm-hmm. Is that something I want to? Because ideally, what I'm trying to do with the, with the uh, this more to, again more to show off and show something for our our viewers, yep. is make a run, is at least try to make a run on site, penetrate to the server room, and Trojan the Siam. I like it. It'd be interesting. I, I'd love to see what happens when you get in the server room. I've been in the server room a few times and not really know what I'm doing in there, mm, uh, within yeah. the context of the game, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I'll just try to just obviously we were just enumerating the firewall to amuse ourselves. Alex, how has playing this game um, educated you within cybersecurity practices? Well, it's sort of shown how, like I said, because it's the strategic operational level stuff, like flagpole and Commonwealth Forces parlance, it sort of taught me how it all sort of hangs together. And mm -hmm. then like playing like how like uh, try hack me then sort of down in the details like why would you be why would you be doing xyz oh to open up like to try to move laterally into this network segment <laughs> b-sex dropping uh, dropping uh, jokes here he, he, he's saying that i don't know what i'm doing in the server room it's been a minute since i've been in there b-sec he's got jokes man this guy Hello. all right <laughs> okay, so that's our COVID attack is prepped. Say it again. I'm sorry. The yep. sound effects got me. All right, our COVID attack is prepped. I'm going to grid gen up some physical security because I believe that's what drives, uh, like when you're actually searching something, mm -hmm. like actually like actually doing physical recon on site. I believe your physical physical security level helps there. And we're gonna, we're going to take one turn to the perimeter, one turn to the the corporate office, and then one turn to the server room okay. so it, it, it should land before we get too ensconced okay perimeter obviously method is irrelevant because you walk up now see this depends on what physical defenses they uh, blue have in place because obviously if they got nothing i'm just going to waltz in right if they got more then i'm going to find it i'm going to find it more problematic All right, we've reached the perimeter. I love being they on don't... the perimeter and throwing uh, USB devices. That's like yeah. my favorite thing. Yeah, so I, I, I had to leave something out. I don't have that many turns and all that all that long to to actually go through with everything. But yeah, USB is fun. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, every, I'm going to gonna move the corporate office because of the, the overall goal I outlined. Okay, so yep, uh, let's go to corporate office. And it's also, if I get arrested, it helps my notoriety, helps my chance of recruiting people while I'm assisting the constabulary. Nice, dude. Okay, we got in. Boom. Yep. Let's do it. Now this is, okay, check. Okay, they, they've got locks in place. How can you tell? Clone Arthur badge is available. Oh, so that's uh, a, a variable uh, condition. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, cool. Yeah. The blue team must have electronic locks installed in the out of the wiki. Nice. Well, you can just use your trusty Flipper Zero and go ahead and clone that, right? If you wanted. Well, I could try. Although that one... Uh... Uh, you do you, Alex. I'm not... Uh, you're the game okay. player, not me. I guess I'm going to clone the Arthur badge. That... And we're going to shift into the data shift into the data room itself. Now we're going to try because we're cloning the badge, but we don't have the badge yet. So 
I'm going to stick to social engineering because I'm because That's I where don't, you spend I don't know. all your research, right? Yeah, and also I don't know whether I have the um, badge yet because uh. I've just queued it up this turn. Yeah, you'd be taking uh, a pretty big gamble. It would be stacked yeah. in the in the queue correctly, but you have a potential yeah. to shoot yeah, it's yourself. Yeah, not it's not guaranteed because yeah, because my physical security skill isn't great. So let's see what happens. Okay, we talked our way into the server room. No big deal. No big deal. I love it. Is this what it looks and... like, BSEC? Is this is this what it looks like a, a server room? Oh, that's crazy. That's cool. Okay, now while we're in here, first we need to case the. Well, first we need to look around and case the joint. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, we add a, add a little surprise package. So can I see your action queue? Insider physical recon. So this will allow you to look around the server room for devices. Yep. All yeah. right. Cool. Like this is roughly equivalent to the the server segment on the on the network map. Mm -hmm. So this is the this is stuff like the Siam AD server. I love it. And then I love the 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 uh, rogue device leave behind the persistence mechanism. Very cool. Yeah. So it's just if it happens, it happens. Cactoid Jim calling out calling him out. This organization is D E D right. dead. Maybe. Okay. All right. Now, what I've now uh, this I've found what I came okay, the rogue device didn't didn't land. Uh, well, now, a little bit of a gameplay tip. There's only one Linus computer on the map, and it's the Siam. Yeah, oh, that is it. Oh, God. Alex Goodwin is dropping knowledge bombs for game players. Like like I said, I played this game, I don't know, 50, 60, 100 times. Did not know that. Didn't pick up on that, but that's really good to know. Mm. Okay, so we're going to just try to Trojan the Siam. Because as you've seen on other streams. Yeah, that's what I'm doing next, Cactoid. But up, and then we'll yeah we'll we'll leave a little surprise package because obviously Whoa. I, I want to compromise I want to compromise this I am so I shut down shut down their their threat reporting which yeah is or as Cactoid Jim said it in a much fancier way I like it kills, and it looks like kills. your RFID badge was successfully yeah. cloned yeah so I should be able to stay stick around a little longer because hey I've got a badge it works we swipe it all that works all right like in turn because everyone busy with trojaning the siam and all right good luck to you alex i hope the mm. rng gods are good to rogue you rogue device okay didn't okay we, we got the rogue device not the trojan mm -hmm. okay this is going to get annoying so right. hey a really interesting um observation mm. for me is that you don't need to enumerate the services and get more information about this computer to plant a trojan on it which i love it saves you a turn or two yeah well this is because you're physically walking up to it yeah yeah brilliant i, I believe it might might actually be called an evil maid attack or something i'm not sure uh, there's something that bruce schneier called it I... yeah evil maids typically yeah physical access to your laptop in your hotel yeah. room yeah all right so we'll try the linux linux box and we'll go pick a pick one of the servers so we'll try to that side and what the heck because it's because network segmented let's do a host scan and see if there's anything we didn't spot physically so so alex the pony express and the on-site pivot those are the same thing no because the on-site pivot is essentially is what i think it's how the game has to represent your access through like your your kit while you're there okay. if i beat feet the on-site pivot will disappear because I'm no longer on site. I see. But the pain, but the uh, rogue device will stay until blue team mumbles it. Okay, cool. And you have been on site for about three or four turns, which <clears throat> is is starting to get a little hairy. I'm starting to get a little anxious uh, hmm. uh, about you being there. So. Oh, that's why I went for the badge. Hmm. I said, yeah, it is probably a well a Trojan. I just want to see what happens. So the badge. So the badge does more than just get you, it, it is an attack vector for moving around the facility. It also reduces mm. the likelihood of detection. I believe so. Uh, looks, looks so. Nice. All right. So we'll try, keep, keep on. 
Now we have any, and then start while we're waiting, start enumerating, start enumerating things. I'm pretty surprised that Blue Team has continued to leave their AD server ransomware for multiple turns. That would be a mm. tier one, like all hands yeah. on deck. You, you, good thing you wore your brown pants day. Mm. Yeah. All right. I'm just trying to trojan a couple other machines just to try to show some. And we are now assisting the constabulary with our inquiries. <laughs> Man, I, I found a ready switch. Okay, now that makes should make us notorious enough. We can probably recruit more people. Remember, I did right. the ran, pop ransomware, the spearfish, the campaign, got arrested. All yeah, dude, all of those boost your chances. You are elite hacksaw. There's no question. And obviously, everyone's busy, so let's just flick through. And of course, of course, we're assisting the constabulary. We lose three actions for three turns. So this. No, I'm just going to flick through these next couple of turns. <laughs> BSEC making a, a practical observation that mm. it's a junior analyst on a, on a skeleton crew over a long holiday weekend, and that's why the thing's still ransomware, because they don't know what to do. Could be. Yeah. Now. And no, uh, well, I had a bit less than even chance, and she didn't come off. Oh man, that's that sinks. Ah, uh, don't worry. Okay, so now we'll buff up our food because I'm I'm still trying to show something off with this Trojan Trojaning thing. Yep, the on-site hacker so. got arrested. Richard uh, Gicharu in chat asking who got arrested. Yeah. Okay, so we've got physical security revving. That helps with uh, a lot of the like recon. Obviously, we don't need to do recon in the server room again because we've already cased the joint. Mm -hmm. So, but and yeah, that first arrest would have generated about three percent threat intel. So nothing really problematic. You can get arrested just purely on threat intel. You can get arrested like about six, seven times and not blow the and not blow the hundred percent threat intel. Nice. So. Okay, so you've got how many Trojans do you have? None. Oh, okay. I tried multiple times and none of them came off. Nice. The old. So I'm, I'm yeah. yeah, I'm rev revving up the physical security. Just to, and then as I said, I'm just trying to show off something that our viewers may not be aware of. However, I, for that, I need to actually get into the server room and have it actually land. All right. Now we keep beating feet. Actually, no, we can't. We've got, we've got to reclone our badge. We've got to take an office. The nerve, huh? The nerve of them to come. And also, it looks like the um, rogue device got cleaned up too. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, you would have seen that even yeah. if you were back at the hacker hangout, right? I don't think I, I didn't get any notification for it. Not sure if that's how it's supposed to happen or. Yeah, Aaron, uh, if Aaron or any other uh, testers are in chat, mm. it'd be interesting what you guys think. All right. So B-Sex champion, the uh, blue team here. And so because I've got the physical security recon running, I'm also going to take a breather, clone the badge, then keep trying to make another run to the site. And if this doesn't work, I'll then probably have to then switch over to to break out from the serve at the AD pivot. All right, making big moves. Like big moves. I love it. Okay. We got we have the Arfid card. All right. Well, you work here now. <laughs> Pretty much the plan. Okay, so we got a shift. Now I'm I'm two steps away from the um so I'll rip that up. I'm two steps away from the server room, so let's try, now that we've got the card, let's try electronic entry. Nice. Three resources, one turn. Going YOLO. Yeah. Sorry, yep, research for security, just because I need something to occupy the time, because I'm not bothering with dropping USBs. Yeah, hey, 
You're not going to get any complaints from me, Alex. I am. I'll be first in line to champion maximum resource utilization. It it kills me if I even can't. Yeah. Like if I spend I've if one. Yeah. It's it's so. It's, I've noticed. It's too important. Right, so. Hmm. Okay. We waltzed in with our badge. Nicely done, Alex. Now, obviously, we're going to move to the corporate data room, electronic. Now, this is where the order of actions, because this is actually, there's a blurb says there, I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen, but you'll, you can see it when you go to change location in the game. Uh, the better your physical security skill, the better this chance has of succeeding. Mm -hmm. And I've got a physical security research just landing. Because that was queued up last turn, that'll land, take effect, and then I'll go into, I'll go into the server room. Perfect. Assuming, of course, we, assuming, of course, Di Linster doesn't inform me you're nicked, you, have, you uh -huh. don't have to say anything, etc., etc., etc. That's funny. We got chat here, BSEC saying that on-site security, straight Carl and it just missing. Oh, looks like. Uh... Yeah. They're on to you. Yeah. Well, let's see. What do we do? That's probably because I, 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 the beat broke stride on the on the perimeter. Hmm. Mm. Oh, so the, the clock started counting down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna try recruit. I'm gonna let's see. Should I try recruiting hackers again? Reckon or should I? I, I would. I love. I love uh, increasing my resource All right. pool. All right. It looks like. Okay, because everyone's going to be busy, so I just flick through these next couple of turns. Damn, Siso fired. Yeah, because wow. remember, I had those two. I had those two boxes bleeding out. Wow. Well done. Well done, Alex. So, uh, just that early, like turn two or three, Exil disruptive malware uh, was enough. No, to... that was turn six or seven, because I, no, I popped the box T six. Wow. Really well done. 47 minutes, turn 34, and not even like a, uh, um, you know, uh, a, a venomous strike, right? You weren't operating like an assassin looking to just uh, mow through this company. You were actually demonstrating to us in chat what uh, what can be done in the platform from the red team. So let's 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 break down what's going on here uh, from yeah. the report, Alex. What 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 jumps out to you first? Uh, well, blue, yeah, blue team really, blue team really got a wriggle on. They had, they got, they didn't muck around on their budget. They had made four attempts over thirty-four turns, so around about one attempt every eight turns or so, mm -hmm. before counting any any spin up, which is usually five six turns at the start, where you can sort of get like the, um, like the, the uh, budget defender thing, get the extra ten grand, sort of run down your initial cash to get and get things set up like segment to that authentication a couple other things yeah you know what a couple of things that jump out to me first of all you have 102 percent resource utilization which makes me like if i could put i think that might be a bug no well i know but for the, for the sake of this uh discussion mm. you're over 100 percent, which is near and dear to my heart so if i could stick mm. like heart emojis on my eyeballs <laughs> right now i would for what you've yeah. done um, but looking at them, they've remediated zero vulnerabilities, so that's not good. Oh. They, you had their AD controller ransomware, which is very overt to the blue team, and they made no effort to yeah. um, resolve it at all. Look at that at the top: zero detected, zero resolved. How do you not detect when the box is ransomware? It's like they tell you, the bad guys tell you it's ransomware. Yeah. Anyway, let's go to the that's so yeah, let's go to the results, blue team yep. network. Mm hmm Yeah, I I only had the two compromise. I was aiming for this sucker. Mm hmm But yeah, and that and that, that, that threat intel is from is purely from my from me getting arrested twice. Yeah. It it is interesting. Um, you know, there's been discussion on this channel from Clint about the value that ransomware um, from a PL loss perspective, what that generates and how the OT 
and the engineering workstations and the P PLS uh, data historian, how those are all the valuable mm -hmm. assets. But, you know, you just had the DC. I don't know if the developers have um, rebalanced the value of IT infrastructure, but it, it's quite surprising how um, how I valuable the, that AD server was. I had the AD server for 20 plus turns. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you had Remember, gotten the data historian, how many turns do you reckon it would have been? Uh, roughly? Less. Okay. Oh, probably, oh, I haven't actually got to measure it, so, but I'd probably say if I had the full whole hog, like XFIL, mal, disruptive malware, ran, and active ransomware, probably say 10 turns, maybe. So oh, okay. that's off the top of my head and not knowing the internals of the code. Yeah, but still, you know, uh, like two times faster, three times faster well, is kind of roughly what you're saying. Yeah, and that's just the one. Obviously, if you've got both historians ransom, blue team's having a very bad day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because BSEC, you're in the process zone. Mm -hmm, yeah, it's not good. BSEC actually mentions how funny it is that uh, the goober that was uh, checking social media from the AD server keeps their job, whereas the CISO, who was definitely not or should not have been in the AD server at all, um, w was fired, in fact. That, that was kind of the disposition of this, so... Mm -hmm. Tough day for the um, for the CISO, but in real life, they probably would have gotten uh, you know a more appealing resume from having dealt with a AD ransomware attack, right? So, so you kind of okay. win you kind of win either way if you if you don't get ransomware or if you do get ransomware. So yeah, so yeah, because that sort of ran a bit shorter, I actually was wondering because I, I a couple of things like one of the things I was talking about um, you know, earlier, if you go a second round with a with a known C just sort of like a demonstrate this is one thing that can happen mm -hmm, if you're mm -hmm. if, if you're up to that and if the uh, viewers want to see it uh so you want to do it right now you're thinking yeah well what yeah it looks like system patches yeah it looks actually yeah cactoid yeah it looks like um restore loop that's a very late asset inventory mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah, I mean, if 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 uh, if you think we can rip through it in about seven minutes, Alex, we can yeah. totally jump into that. All right. So let we're going to do another one, Alex. Uh, can can you uh, just jump in and while you're setting it up, explain exactly what this short demo, the second short demo that we're going okay. to. Uh... Well, what I'm going to, what I'm aiming to re replicate here. Uh, is actually landing a landing a spearfish on an existential risk. Okay. And this is uh this is staged essentially. Yeah, because I, I, I'm I'm replaying a known seed. This is just just okay. try to something a little 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 different, just to say yes, this can work. All right. Yeah. Let Let's see it. All right. Play. Single player. Red team. Yeah. Pipeline. You know, I... Just because. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Yep. Yeah. Pipeline. Just because that's. To reproduce what I'm aiming for. Okay. Start is very much similar. OSINT. Yes. Persistence and electronic SE. Alex, can you get rid of there's a Discord pop up in the right corner. Is oh, there a way to thank you? They, they got it? Yep, it's all set. All right, yeah, that was the Discord install thing. Okay, yep. So we'll click through that because everyone's busy. So right now we are watching Alex Goodwin play Threat Gen Red vs. Blue, a cybersecurity game-based simulation platform. And we just played through one time and Alex demonstrated a couple different techniques and ultimately won as the red team threat actor. And now we're playing again in a hyper um, accelerated yeah. version for Alex to demonstrate a very specific uh, yeah. win condition. Yeah. 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 Jim uh, freely used the random, the seed against the AI, but Generally, not against another player unless they're unless they're specifically agreeing to it. Yeah, that would be uh, downright cold. Yeah. yeah, like obviously, if they agree to it, fair enough. But otherwise, don't don't join the game. Yeah. All right, everyone's busy, so I'll flick through these two turns. Okay. Now the spearfish is resolving next turn. So I'm going to search default credentials. Nice. 
just to basically just something to fill up the mm -hmm. meter. Got to get that hundred plus percent threat utilization. Mm -hmm. I mean, a resource utilization. Something landed. Bingo. Okay, so damn. All right, so turn five, you did a spearfish and nailed the engineer workstation. Turn the turn three. I uh, actually let me just check. No, I did not. I uh, turn three. I launched the spearfish. I landed the H landed the HMI PC, not the engineering workstation. That would be EW some number. That's operator PCS some number. Uh huh. Excellent. Yeah, and then of course because I've, of course I've popped an X risk damage ICS process is the next up. Boom. Damn. So, wow. And I don't know if blue team could have done anything about that. <laughs> uh, you can, you gotta be lucky, uh, run an early Voln hunt fix. Uh, cause I think what you'll find is there's a week on that, on that X risk. There's a week, there's a week antivirus form. Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you can find that and fix that, you can defend it. If you, you can also try, um, an early, if you can, if you can fit it in two factor authentication, I'm not sure if it'll even work. Yeah. But it just goes to show you all these assets in this environment mm. and, you know, turns, you know, six turns and Alex is able to basically mm. just mow through this blue team operator. So yeah, yeah very, very, everything. very effective. You can see the pipelines were well, on fire. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to the scoreboard. Yeah. Look at, they already requested budget. Oh my God, man. Yeah. The, and they got it. Yeah. Just goes to show you money doesn't solve everything in the InfoSec world. Yeah. All right. I'm going to jump. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. The, yes. Jim, there is always a way in. carry. This was a sort of a canned prepared game that I already had already knew what was doing and the and the steps i was taking i'm basically replaying game familiar just to show you guys this is also something that can happen yeah absolutely and it was really well done um alex you know thank you so much for uh giving us that uh essentially master class that's what i'll call it because it really was uh in advanced gameplay game mechanics of the threat gen red versus blue platform um, it really, really, I learned several things. Uh, thank you for that. I hopefully chat learned several things. Uh, any, any kind of final thoughts, Alex, before we, uh, head on out? Uh, well, it's probably, I think I learned a bit just by going through it and explaining it to you and the guys in chat mm -hmm. and th thanks for some brilliant questions from the guys in chat and forced me to rethink what I was, think through a couple of things I was working on. Yeah. So thank you for that guys. Uh, I probably learned a bit from teaching it. As I said, I was just did that second one because the first the the first game sort of bled out quicker than I was expecting, and I'm thinking, well, let's just give you guys a bit more bit more to watch. Yeah, no, it's but, fun too. Yeah. Like the the ICS uh, blow up is always a, a fun win condition. Hmm. So yeah, so I hopefully, guys in chat, you got had some fun, learned something. I love it. Yeah. And if you haven't, you can join here. I'll, I, I wish we had a, a, yeah. a better uh, URL for it, but you could take a screen cap of that. If you want to join the Threat Gen Discord server, Alex um, Goodwin is up in that server um, with some frequency. And Alex, do you take challenges or challengers uh, for heads up play? Yeah. So, yeah, sometimes. And so, one thing I do, one thing I do tend to is. One, I'm on Australian Eastern Standard Time, GMT plus 10, because mm -hmm. it's currently 2.30 a.m. here. But yeah, I do, I do try to yeah, take challenges, and also I do try to debrief afterwards, just to go through how, how, like sort of what we did here, but in a bit more forensic and in-depth fashion. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to make people, help people become better players. And so give, and just more, more people trying things then they're going to, they're going to discover stuff which I haven't even thought of. Yeah, really well put. So guys, join the Discord server, say hi to Alex in chat. I will say uh you know, I did win the Threat Gen Red versus Blue Invitational 2022 tournament back in September and I I feel that um had you been in the tournament Alex, I may have gotten my clocked 
cleaned. So, uh, no, I was you know, kudos, the, uh, kudos to the you, other man. Two, the other, David E. and Greg, the other two beta testers, would have probably given you even more of a run for your money. <laughs> well, maybe we can set up uh, um, exhibitions with them at some point in the future. But no, I, I can't speak for them, but yeah. Absolutely. All right, All right cool. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna round it out. So much, uh, thank you so much, Alex. I know it's late in Australia, and yeah. uh, genuinely appreciate you staying up with us and delivering uh, your thoughts, your gameplay, and your uh, value uh, to all of us in chat and uh, and myself on stream. Guys, we do this every Wednesday at eleven thirty a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a let's play. Uh, we do different things with the Threat Gen Red versus Blue platform. If you're interested in the game that we were just playing, uh, maybe you want to be the blue team, maybe the red, maybe you want to learn cybersecurity, maybe you love cybersecurity and you just want to play it, go to ThreatGen.com to learn more about how to get on this platform and start cracking away on the cybersecurity game-based simulation platform that it is. All right, everybody, on behalf of Alex and myself, thank you very much for being here, and we will see y'all next Wednesday at 1130. Cheers, everybody. Bye, guys.